All right, good evening and welcome. I don't know if you're watching in the evening or not, but I'm recording this in the evening. It's not November 8th, 2016 anymore, though, because on, 2000, on, uh, on November 8th, then this room was full of people. It was crazy for the election. And uh, so it's in the parking lot. I told you it was crazy, so that's why we canceled class. So uh, we're making it up now uh, using this video. And uh, when I got here to do this, this cute little uh, tiger kitty was on the uh, lectern, and I thought this was really cute, so I'm leaving this here. This will be our new mascot until somebody comes and claims it, I guess. So uh, it's not November 8th, but this is the class uh, for November 8th, and uh, hopefully you're uh, following along, ready to go. Um, let me do this real quick. Our agenda for tonight, we'll do the announcements, uh, which is basically just reviewing the schedule. Uh, we'll do the opening chat with the video clip, as we usually do. And then tonight's topic is petitions 4 through 7 of the Lord's Prayer. And then we'll have the closing chat, and it says questions for Pastor afterward. Of course, so we're not going to do that uh, this way, but we could do it uh, either, I guess, in the comments below on YouTube, or uh, send me an email, and you can uh, ask whatever questions that you might have that, that we didn't cover. And so, for tonight... Uh, just to tell you where we are, we're making our way through the Lord's Prayer. Of course, we did the introduction to prayer in general. That was in October, and we've covered petitions 1 through 3 already. Uh, so for tonight's class, we're doing petitions 4 through 7. And the next class is November 22nd. That's uh, right before Thanksgiving break. But uh, hopefully you can be here for that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll conclude about prayer and then that's also when you're going to get the quest. That's you know, more than a quiz, less than a test. It's a quest for knowledge. And uh, we'll hand that out. And that's uh, a take-home instrument that uh, you'll do uh, at home and bring back. And then finally, we'll have just one class in December then. That'll be on the second Tuesday of December. And we'll review Sinai year. So that's going to be a review for those who have already covered the Ten Commandments. It'll be a preview if you haven't covered the Ten Commandments yet. And, um, uh, it's a, and that's, that's our schedule. For tonight's class, you do need to have uh, two handouts. And uh, the one is uh, notes for IOTA 3. So you should have this. Uh, there's a link for this in the description for, uh, for the video and also in the email that I sent out for you. So make sure that you have notes for IOTA 3, and then have your student-parent discussion page, uh, and that's dated, it has November 8th date on it. Uh, you, of course, are doing this whenever you do it, and that's fine. Uh, if you want to put the date that you're actually accomplishing it, that would be fine. Uh, do this together and hand this in. This sort of shows that parent and student work together uh, for the class. If you're watching this by yourself, then uh, grab your parent, or grab your student and say, oh, we need to do this together. So press pause, go get them, and uh, make sure you have these printed out. Pause, whatever you need to do to get your stuff. And then your catechism. You'll need your catechism for tonight's class as well. So that should do it for announcements. Uh, our opening chat now says, uh, tonight we will continue discussing the Lord's Prayer. Last time, we talked about praising God instead of just making requests, right? That's how petitions one through three start. It's uh, really more about God than about us. Now, we're going to talk about the things that we should ask God for. So, before we get into that, there's a couple of questions for you. If God gave you the opportunity to ask for one thing, and you would know that you would definitely get it, then what would you ask for? So think about that a little bit. There's a space on your sheet for a student to answer and for a parent to answer. And then together, talk about what are some of the excuses people will use for not praying. And there, you can answer that together. Come up with two or three reasons that people will use excuses for not praying. So uh, go ahead and press pause now, and then press play again when you're ready to start the video. Again, I'm gonna go, I'll fade to black, Press pause, discuss this, write your answers down, and then press play again. All right, go. All right, and we're back. So, uh, now, I have a short video to show you. It says, in this clip, a revolutionary new product is being offered. It claims to make your life easier by saving valuable time. What do you think about this? So watch this video, 
and then discuss it. Hold it right there! Do you still say grace before you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner? If you answered yes, then I've got a product that's going to revolutionize the way you do food. Pre-blessed food! That's right, pre-blessed food. We pray for it so you don't have to. This is the 21st century, folks. We can sell anything. Around the clock, we've got thousands of employees buying brand name foods, praying over them, and then putting them back on the shelves of your local grocery store with our official sticker of approval. We've got breakfast cereal. Pre-blessed! Lunch meat. Pre-blessed! TV dinners. Double pre-blessed! And if you don't want a white guy praying over your food, we've got that too! Please, Lord, bless these eggs, Father. Bless the chicken that had these eggs, Father. Just listen to how pre-blessed food changed these people's lives. Since I switched to pre-blessed food, ain't nothing changed. We've always prayed religiously before eating, but we've been so busy with work and watching TV. Pre-blessed food hasn't only saved us time, it saved our souls. But that's not all. No, 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 that's not all. Inside every package of pre-blessed food are two tickets to heaven. Share them with your friends and family to make sure they go upstairs when they fall downstairs. So visit your local grocery store today and look for our official sticker of approval. And the next time someone asks you to bless the food, you say, it's unbeen blessed. Double pre-blessed. All right, so what did you think about that? That's Julian Smith. Uh, he has uh, quite a YouTube channel. Uh, most of his stuff is pretty good. Um, uh, so some follow-up questions there. Uh, this is for you to discuss uh, again together. How much time do you think you save each day by not praying? So obviously you do save some time by not praying, but is it worth it? Uh, there's a space for student answer and parent answer. And then uh, this is a good quote uh, attributed to Martin Luther. He he's said to have said, um, I have so much to do today, I shall have to spend an extra hour in prayer. So he was so busy that he had to spend extra time in prayer. What do you think about that? Press pause on the video, discuss it, write your answers, and then press play again. All right, so now, here we go. For tonight's lesson... What I want to do, and this is the way we did it three years ago, the uh, format was a little bit different. We had small groups. Uh, there was a, a, an adult leader for each table, and then they talked about these in groups. Uh, I want you to do the same thing, uh, but as parent and student together. So get your catechism ready, and then your page where it says notes for IOTA 3. It's uh, pages 189 through 199 in your catechism. So if you turn to page 189 in your catechism, then these are answers that you should be able to find in your catechism. So, uh, so they're numbered 1, 2, 3 for the 4th petition, 4 and 5, 5th petition, 6 and 7, 6th petition, 8 and 9 for the 7th petition. Those answers that you should be able to find in here starting on page 189. Then there's a couple of additional questions where there's a star, an asterisk, rather than a number, and those are questions that are not in the catechism. Uh, so again, th th that's your page numbers, and you should have the notes page printed out on your own. Work together now, student and parent, to find those answers to the numbered questions on your page. Again, starred questions are not in the catechism, it's either a thought question, something to think about, put down what you think the answer should be, or with the definitions, that's to, to see if you already know what these words mean. And if not, that's fine. We're, uh, we're going to cover it in a little bit. But for now, uh, go ahead. I'm going to have you press pause on the video. Take about, it should take maybe about 15 minutes to do this. Uh, that's what I had suggested three years ago when we did this. Uh, it might take you less time, and that's fine. Uh, if, uh, don't spend too much more than 15 minutes, though, because um, we uh, want to be able to keep moving for you. Uh, so, so if you're not done in 15 minutes, just go ahead and press play again. Uh, press play then to resume the video and go. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you, you found those answers. And uh, we're just going to review them quickly. So I'm going to go through this quickly uh, so it's not to spend a lot of time for you to be writing things down at this point, but hopefully just checking and, uh, and explaining. So, daily bread. What is meant by daily bread? Luther says, 
that this is all that we need to support this body in life. So it's not just bread, obviously, and, uh, and uh, you know, this is where we make all the jokes about low-carb diets and gluten-free and stuff like that too. But, uh, but so obviously food, but then uh, not just food though. So it says give four examples, and so your answers might be varied uh, because there's a long list here. And, and I find this even just slightly comical uh, because he says uh, daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. So that's like saying, etc., right? as if he didn't give just an exhaustive list already. So if there's anything else that he hasn't already listed, and I don't know if you can think of something in addition to this, but, but whatever it is that you could think of, uh, that's what God provides for us. And we talk about this actually when we talk about the first article of the Creed. So that's Nicaea year. You might have covered that already, or that might be coming up for you. But when we talk about the Creed, first article of the Creed and creation, Talk about how God gives us everything. And, uh, and so we thank him for that. Then, number three, why do we say this day and daily? And you have that on here. That's uh, question number 222 on page 192. Uh, and it says, these words teach us not to be greedy or wasteful or to worry about the future. But we're just focusing on today. And so, you know, it's not saying, give me this year, everything that I need for this year. It's saying, get me through this day, and we'll, we'll trust God day by day. Uh, next, what did you think for that thought question, why do we not say, please? Uh, the real answer probably is that the, our word, please, is, that's sort of an innovation in the, in the English language. Uh, it's, it's polite, it's manners. Uh, we feel kind of weird if... Uh, to ask for something and not say please. It's not really a function of, of Greek at uh, biblical times. But there's another answer that you can give too, is that the Lord tells us to pray this way. So, uh, so we're not begging, right? And we don't say, please, please, please give this to me. It's, God invites us to pray this way. We're praying a prayer that he taught us to pray, and so it's perfectly fine to ask for these things. If you, if you want to think about it, uh, and when you say a prayer from your heart, a spontaneous prayer, then you might want to go ahead and say please. Uh, that, rec that admits, that acknowledges that we don't really deserve the things that we're asking for, but God gives them to us graciously. And so, so we can say please, but that's, uh, that's why this uh, prayer is this way. So moving on to the fifth petition. Um, it says, what do we ask for in this petition? We ask that God, our Father, would for Christ's sake Graciously forgive our sins. So forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so that's question five. What does God want us to do for those who sin against us? And we would forgive them and do good to them. So just as God has forgiven us, we are to forgive others. It's, it matches. And it's really the reverse is true that if we say, okay, God, I want you to forgive me, but I'm not going to forgive the people who have sinned against me because what they did to me, that was much worse, right? Right? That's the attitude that we would be giving, when in fact, our sins against God are much worse than any sins that have been committed against us. And, and to, to say otherwise is really dishonoring and disrespecting God. So if, if God can forgive us, we can certainly forgive others. There's the parable of the unmerciful servant that uh, I don't want to take the time right now to get into, but uh, basically, well, I guess I'll just say quickly that... Uh, that the king in this parable forgave a servant tons and tons of money. It was 10,000 talents, which was literally billions of dollars is what it would be worth in today's, uh, in today's money. But then uh, that servant, he had all that debt forgiven. He went and found a fellow servant and he said, you owe me a hundred denarii and that would be a hundred days wages. And so that would convert to several thousand dollars in, in our money. So it's a lot of money, but it's nowhere near the billions of dollars that he had just been forgiven. And so that's what we have to keep in mind. That it seems like a lot to us, and maybe we don't even comprehend 
billions, right? People confuse millions and billions and trillions all the time. It's just a bunch of zeros and it's meaningless to us. But God has forgiven us so much that we don't need to go collect on, on other debts like that. So that's the parable of the unmerciful servant from the Bible. Uh, so then here's the, the definitions. Again, these were not in the catechism, but a trespass is really stepping out of bounds, right? If you see a sign that says no trespassing, it means don't step here. You're not allowed to step here. So there's certain, certain areas, certain boundaries where you're allowed to walk, and then you're not supposed to trespass. So a trespass is when we step out of bounds, we step outside of God's law, and then uh, we need to be forgiven for that. A sin literally means to miss the target. That's why it says it comes from archery. That's where this word came from originally. The biblical term sin means to miss the target. So sometimes you're aiming for the target and you miss it because you just you missed the mark. But uh, then other times we're not even really aiming that well, right? Uh, we're not even trying. Even when we try, then we still mess up because we're sinful, we're imperfect people. So we do have sin that needs to be forgiven. God freely forgives us because Jesus died to take away our sin. Uh, the word debt is something that you owe then, right? And that's another translation of the Lord's prayers to say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So you owe a debt of money, typically. We don't owe a debt of money, but we owe a debt because of our sin. But then to forgive literally means to cancel a debt. So when that debt is for forgiven, then it's canceled, you don't owe the money anymore, and so we don't owe anything to God anymore because Jesus has paid for the debt of our sin. Next, moving on. Uh, obviously, uh, if you want a little bit of time to catch up, you're writing something down, you can press pause uh, on the video anytime, go back and rewatch the video if, if you need to, rewind whatever you need to do. Sixth petition. Uh, the question is, what three spiritual enemies do we have? And that was the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. These are the things that uh, try to interfere with God's will being done, trying to interfere with God's kingdom coming, right? And so those are the, the spiritual enemies that, uh, that we have, that we ask God, lead us not into temptation. So, uh, so God is, if God is leading us, then he's not going to lead us into temptation. So, so it's uh, not that God ever would lead us into temptation, right? Because we're saying, God, you lead us. And if you lead us, then that's not into temptation. Whereas these spiritual enemies try to lead us into, question number seven, false belief, despair, other great sins. So trying to lead us away from God, trying to lead us away from his protection, trying to lead us away from faith, and trusting him and being in his kingdom. Uh, now next, so here was a, a question, if you were able to think of this, the, the difference between temptation and testing. Temptation and testing, it can look very similar, but temptation is hoping for a negative outcome versus testing is hoping for a positive outcome. And there's a story that I really like uh, where you just have to picture like a small town, main street in a small town at night, where all the businesses are closed, all the people have gone home, and so there's a small town and these stores on Main Street, and there's a man going from door to door, jiggling all the doorknobs to see if they're locked or unlocked, to see if he can get into those stores or not. And, uh, and it's very different depending on who that man is. So if this man is a thief, then he's hoping that the door is going to be unlocked because he wants to break in and he wants to steal. He wants to, uh, to steal everything in the store. So he jiggles the handle, hoping, hoping that it will open and he can get in to steal. But if that man instead is a police officer, then he's going along, still jiggling all the handles, but he's hoping that it's locked. He's hoping that it's secure, that it, that would keep any of the bad guys out. So, so outwardly, it looks exactly the same. And if, if you can't see who's doing the jiggling, then, then you can't tell if that's temptation or if it's testing. But so, uh, so temptation would come from the devil. Testing would come from the Lord. Might seem the same to us, but God wants to see a positive outcome. He wants to see that we can stand up to this testing that, that will pass the test, that will be true to him, will be faithful to him, will obey his commandments. Whereas the temptation coming from the devil, or even if it's our own sinful nature, our own flesh, uh, then that's trying to draw us away from God is hoping that we'll fail. So, uh, so again, it might look the same, it might feel similar, 
but we can trust God is going to be with us. He wants to see us succeed. And uh, finally, now the seventh petition. The word deliver just means to rescue. And, and this is important. Uh, we use the word deliver today to mean uh, like to, uh, you, you deliver a package, you bring a package, you drop it off, you carry it from one place to another. Uh, here, this deliver really, really means to be carried it's, it's like that, that's the aspect of delivering. It's like the, the carrying of it, but you're being carried out of a problem. You're being carried out of danger. So you're being rescued from evil. And uh, then the, the explanation says that, uh, says that we're praying that God would give us a blessed end, which is going to heaven then when we die. So, uh, so this, in this prayer, we're really saying, uh, God, always be with us uh, to lead us not into temptation, the sixth petition, seventh petition, but deliver us from evil. So save us from anything in this world that might harm us. And then finally, in the end, we'll be saved from hell. We'll be saved from eternal death. We'll go to be with the Lord forever. So for our closing chat, then uh, here's Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. It says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. To empathize means to sympathize, right? To feel the same way, right? But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help, to help us in our time of need. So uh, go ahead and talk about this uh, just quickly between student and parent. Did Jesus face temptations just like us, and how did he overcome them? And does God care more about us being tempted, or how we respond to the temptation? So go ahead, press pause, discuss this, write your answers down, and then come right back for just a little bit at the end. All right, and we're back. And again, questions for Pastor. Uh, if you have anything, feel free to send me an email. You can text me at my cell phone number. I'll put my cell phone number in, uh, in the email, or you, uh, you should know it, you can always uh, contact me that way then as well. And uh, that's it. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. And I'm glad that we're able to, uh, to make up the class this way. See you November 22nd on that Tuesday. And uh, that's where we'll cover, again, we're going to cover uh, the uh, conclusion to prayer. And then we'll have the quest that covers the Lord's Prayer and prayer in general. All right. Have a good night.